Life can change in an instant. How you react affects not only you, but others around you. Hi, I'm Kenzie Montoya. I'm a senior, and this is my story. During my freshman year of high school, my dad was diagnosed with ALS, which is also called Lou Gehrig's disease. And he had the disease for 19 months before he passed. And when he passed, it was April 29th, 2016. And that was just, it's an indescribable event. He was going through this time for about a week of just kind of like laying there not talking and uh, we kind of knew it was time and just during that week time span um, it was an unimaginable feeling knowing that you're just counting down the days till your loved one passes. ALS is a terminal disease, which means basically your body deteriorate, deteriorates um, and your brain is still functioning, just your body can't do anything. It's awful to see someone you love like just deteriorate like that in front of you in such a short time. And normally with ALS, you have like three to seven years of being with that disease. And if anyone knew my dad personally, like they know that he can't just like sit around and just be there. He has to be doing something. He has to be interacting with everyone and him just not being able to was probably like the hardest thing to see him go through was he just couldn't do everything he used to do anymore. I was definitely daddy's little girl. Um, I d always did sports. He was always with me, taking me to practices, going to all my games. Um, he wanted me to do everything and was willing to be there no matter what. And uh, even when he was sick, I was the one, my mom and I were the ones like taking care of him. And uh, I think it made our bond even stronger. And uh, yeah, we just have always been really close. And after he passed away, it's, it just feels like I lost a part of me when he passed. I guess you really don't know what others are going through. And so you should always take into account that Doing those small things like complimenting someone or holding a door open for someone go a long way and during the time my dad passing just someone I've never really talked to for however long it may have been just comes up to me and just has a conversation like that meant so much more than just kind of like people leaving me alone. I think everyone should no matter what situation they're going through should be open about what's going on and the people around them should be okay with having conversation with them. I'm Jackson and I'm a senior. I'm Mo and I am a junior. I'm Carson, I go to Kevin, I'm a seventh grader. I'm JJ and I'm a seventh grader. And this is our story. Uh, what they have is called severe combined immunodeficiency, otherwise known as SCIDS. And it was diagnosed to them at a very young age, like a couple months after they were born. And it means basically that they don't have an immune system at all. One night or a day, I don't remember, I was little, but pretty much Carson went down pretty much and like had a seizure and stuff and he wasn't breathing and they had to resuscitate him. My mom took him to the hospital like fast, if you know what I mean. And they were diagnosed and then in hospital for like two years after that day. So they're one of like, how many would you say, about 20 people at the time that were di in the United States and Canada that were diagnosed with it. Um, I mean, and a lot of things that happened since then, they've had skin diseases that have gone out of control. They've met with San Francisco almost on like a monthly basis and they still go to the hospital at least every three weeks to do blood work, to do infusions. We've just been really blessed to have the opportunity to, to talk to so many doc, high known doctors that they have like really good treatment and we're just grateful that we even have opportunity to 
have them be in hospitals where in other places they would they wouldn't have the medical treatment that they have here in America. I mean, I think it's brought us really close together to have to depend on one another, especially like me depending on Mo. Like I may not realize it in the moment, but it really does. It's hard when you don't have someone that you can at least talk to or at least bring some relate to. Relate to. Because it is kind of a weird situation that we have. But yeah, it's brought us close together in that we all know what, we know what each other are thinking a lot of the time. What bothers me the most is when people just aren't kind in general, but especially when they aren't kind to like special needs children. Because that just, it's like you don't know, you don't know what they go through, you don't know like their family's lives. So if you, if it's obvious and you know that they're special, like why pick on them, why make fun of them? Um, well... I've been through a lot, and it's nice to have a little bit of kindness towards you, because a lot of people don't know, so it's nice. Kindness goes a long way. Um, like I'll get these texts um, from people occasionally, from even here at school, they'll just be like, call, or they'll call, or just text and check in and be like, hey, how is the family going, how is the brother going? And I don't think they understand how far that goes. Um, just to know that there's at least someone that's thinking about your family that if they even know. But yeah, kindness goes, kindness goes far away. Like I still think about it almost regularly. Kindness counts. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Nicole Gearing. I'm a senior and this is my story. So it was August, no, August 15th, 2013. Um, I had, my mom dropped me off at the barn like she usually did. She never really stayed to watch because she'd been dropping me off since I was like six years old. I was kind of independent. And the horse that I was currently, currently owned, I no longer own her. I went to walk her back up the hill to put her back in her stall. And I just kind of remember Somehow I was looking at the back end of her and that wasn't normal. And then I saw her hoof kind of come up and hit me square in the jaw. And um, it was really loud in my head. It was really loud and it went black for a little bit and I kind of got knocked back. And I think I landed kind of like on my hands and knees somehow. Then I kind of looked down and I saw there was a lot of not pretty looking stuff kind of coming out of my mouth and on the floor. And um, I went and like, rubbed my tongue against the bottom row of my teeth and I didn't have any. I like I was like, uh oh, I lost all my teeth and but they were just like completely flattened down. Um, I split my lip and it was and I could kind of feel that and then I thought I was like, okay, my mouth's open and like that's weird and I couldn't shut my mouth and that was kind of when I knew something was wrong. And then I was like, I, I should probably get help, but no one was there, so I just I screamed and there was one other person at the barn that night. And like, if she wasn't there, I would not be sitting here today. Um, and so they did the surgery. During the surgery, they um, took two titanium plates and put them in the center of my chin to get my chin back together, basically. And then I had snapped off the top of my condyles, which are like your joints to your jaw. That would require them to place wires in the back of my head that shut my mouth for about six weeks. And then, so I had the wires in for six weeks, um, and then after the six weeks, I had another surgery to take them out. The perfect storm of events that kinda just occurred, and I, that to me is still kinda crazy that it was, I bet I'm that lucky that it could've been completely different and I wouldn't be sitting here. What happens when something does happen to you and how you react to that is kind of what makes you you and makes you different, I think. And so I wasn't, I mean, I got hurt, but you got to pick yourself up from the dirt and wipe yourself off and say, you know what, that sucked. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to get back on. I'm going to do it better than the first time I did it. I think if you do, if you hit that roadblock or you hit that kind of problem where you don't know, if you should like keep going, that's the true test of 
and that's what determines who's good and who's really good, I think. And so just push through when you feel like nothing's working and just say, you know what? Take a deep breath and say, I'm better than this and I'm going to be better than this and I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. Important, especially in a high school setting to really just let people know that you actually care about them and that you do, you are listening to them when they're telling you like a problem that you're not just saying like, oh, that sucks, yeah, and then like move on to the next topic. I think kindness has a lot to do with just letting people know that you're listening to them and that you hear them when they're speaking and you're acknowledging their problems and you're not just kind of brushing it off. Yeah, just letting people know that like you care and caring is, I think, the first step to kindness.